Okay, and here is the entrance to the museum. And admission is ten dollars. You might get in for five, honey. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna leave the comments off. Ooh, look at the big presidential seal on the glass. All right. Okay, so we are now in the Herbert Hoover Presidential Library, and they have the the gallery's entrance, temporary exhibits. And the temporary exhibit this time is black and white photos from farming life from 1925 to 1960s, I think it was. Uh, in this uh, temporary exhibit, this is just the farm life in Iowa. From 1925 to 1960, this represents, they have... Uh, it's 35 of the most revolutionary years for farming as way of life in Iowa. There you go. Fascinating. So, oh, look at that camera. Here, that's the photographer right there. That's the one who took all these pictures. So. How long did they have to stand there, though, to use that camera? I don't know. So, very interesting photos of the farm, farm life and how it was. No, it is kind of interesting. Back here okay, in the day. I take it back. A motorized butter churner. Look that's at that. probably. That is revolutionary. Yeah. 1950. 1950s. Okay. I've seen a, a photo over here that I absolutely have fallen in love with. The three kids. Three kids and a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> this little bro. face. Look at him. He's so cute. I want to hold it too. That's exactly what's happening here. Yep. <laughs> uh, how cute is that photo? Oh, <laughs> look at He got it like. I think it's Grandpa up here in the corner. What's this called? Albert Now Children with Burrow. And here are the rest of the photos here in the gallery. So I won't bore you with some black and white photos. We'll <laughs> take a look at these, and then we'll go actually into the Presidential Library. OK, I have to show you one more <laughs> picture here. This is 4,800 turkeys. Tom, Tom huh? turkeys. Pound turkeys. Tom, not pound turkeys, Tom, Tom tur turkeys. This is 4,800 Tom turkeys. I had to show you this one more picture here. Look at this guy. Get these turkeys away from me. <laughs> I'm trapped by the turkeys. They had a big turkey farm. As God is my witness, I thought turkeys could, could fly. fly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go on into the gallery. No flash photography. You got it. No food or drinks. You got it. Look at him at age one. Three. Age three. Kind of looks a little like Cole. Yeah, a little bit. And then May. And then we Herbert got, and Tad. Oh, yeah. wait. A quilt made by Herbert Hoover's great grandmother. Wow, but that's the actual quilt made by his great grandmother. Made by Herbert Hoover's great grandmother in 1860. 18. 60. It's incredible. It held up pretty good. <laughs> that is the family Bible. Look at that. From eighteen seventy four to nineteen fourteen was called his Years of Adventure. What's this here? The geology Records Survey. Huh. So he did work as a surveyor. And here they are, look at this. That is Arthur Diggles, Herbert Hoover, R. E. McDonald's and James White. The surveying squad of Stanford University in 1893. He was, he was. Becky just told me that he was the youngest freshman of his class. Yeah, youngest member of the freshman class at 17. Hmm. He managed the baseball and football team, started a laundry, and ran a lecture agency. Wow. He's a busy man. 
That is his Stanford yearbook. A dance card. <laughs> Lou's dance card signed by Bert from a college social event in 1895. This is a picture of Herbert Hoover in a top hat, and he said he was trying to look 35 at the age of 23. <laughs> he applied for an engineering position in Australia. So his, uh, his degree is in geology. Yeah, he has a bachelor's degree in a geology. A bachelor's degree in geology. And this is where he also met Lou, which would wind up being his future wife. <clears throat> this was his time in Australia. He is <laughs> laughing at a photo of him. That looks awesome. <laughs> With the pipe. <laughs> and then they went to China. That's awesome. So, look at this. Look at the tiny little shoes. Those are some tiny shoes. That these are some of the artifacts they brought back with them from China. There are Chinese name were Huya and Hulu. Huya and Hulu. <laughs> Bert and Lou's His Chinese name was Huya and, and her, her name, name was, was Hulu. Hulu. <laughs> Summer of 1900. Bert and Lou's marriage. This was just kind of fun. It said he was a man of the world. And between 1901 and 14, Hoover became a familiar figure on four continents. He saw the world of Rudyard Kipling and Somerset Magum. Yeah, crept through the London fogs, contracted malaria in the Asian rice paddy, and once backed out of a Burmese mine after discovering fresh tiger tracks. <laughs> Interesting. Baby clothing. This belonged to Herbert Jr. and Alan. This camera belonged to Lou Hoover. It was a Kodak camera from 1915. And with it, she took several, several photos. <laughs> Actually, go through her. Photo album. Hmm. There is one of his top hats. <laughs> so, in August of 1914, he got his chance to be of service to others and started the uh, European Relief Council. And uh, there was American relief coming in to help with World War I uh, because he said he was bored of making money at that time. <laughs> and the Quaker side of him took over. <laughs> I like this saying right here. Look at this. The difference between dictatorship and democracy, Hoover liked to say, was simple. Dictators organize from the top down, democracies from the bottom up. So then we go into after the Great War. This was actually a life mask. You always hear of death masks, but... This was a life mask that they made when he was still alive. At the Versailles Peace Conferences in Paris. Done at the time of the Versailles Peace Conference? Mm -hmm. okay. In Paris, France, 1919. It's this stuff. So these are things that you could make with war flour. Ah, so there was Every dishes. Every woman who serves in her home these good things to eat will just that degree by conserving wheat flour help win the war. Very cool. So helping Hoover in our U.S. school garden. It was all about flour. Food will win the war. And then there was 
was the consumer revolution. And that's when cars came into play, like the Packard. Hormel ham in cans. <laughs> yes, all the different fads. F. Scott Fitzgerald. There's literature. There's all the sports figures. Red Grange, Bobby Jones. Babe Ruth. Remember we saw Clara Bow? Clara Bow, she was the it girl of the 20s. Yeah, we saw her in that silent movie. We saw her in a silent movie of uh, 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 The Lost World. <laughs> yeah, she was some sort of hula dancer. Yeah. It was interesting. <laughs> Al Jolson. And, look at the Roaring Twenties. got Charlie Chaplin, Mickey Mouse. Rudy Valentino. Yeah. Charles Lindbergh. Now, did you see in the news yes. that they found her bones? They found her bones that just her recently here, and they they uh, have discovered that she where she died, where where she spent her last days. And here's some of the modern conveniences of the time: electricity, electric irons, and toasters, and heaters, and blenders. And Hoover was part of the very first television broadcast in 1927. So the loss of both of his parents before his 10th birthday made him deeply sympathetic to other children and in distress. And he actually wrote the Child's Bill of Rights. And then he was the Secretary of Commerce. And these are the years of enterprise from 1921 to 1928. So standardization pasteurized milk, regulation of radio waves, aviation, highway safety, fisheries and industry. This was actually his, on his desk, the nameplate. It says Secretary Hoover. Yeah, the reason why we have such standards in electricity and water and aviation and highways and things like that is all because of Herbert Hoover. So originally called the Boulder Dam, it was then changed to the Hoover Dam. Huge source of hydroelectricity. So, this is all about how when Hoover, Herbert Hoover won the presidency, and he gave his speech. This is kind of neat because you can stand there and see kind of what Herbert Hoover was looking at, and these are the microphones that were used in his speech. That's interesting. Like this, discarding the traditional inaugural ball, Washingtonians attend an affair, attended an affair held to benefit a local charity. Unfortunately, eight months later, Wall Street would crash, the great stock market crash. And that just completely wiped out all of his hopes for a reform presidency. But here's some of his accomplishments. What do we got here? Hmm. He banished the White House stables and mothballing the presidential yacht. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. 
Wow. He canceled private oil leases on government land. <laughs> he successfully arrested Al Capone. For tax his, evasion. For tax evasion, at least. <laughs> yeah, but we are from Chicago. We know Al Capone was a huge yeah. local hero. $500 million of farm relief. The Manchurian crisis. He also established the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Yeah, he also, yeah, he created the Veterans Administration uh, for the hospitals. Doubled the Veterans Hospital facilities. He established the Antitrust Division of the Justice Department to prosecute unfair competition and restraint of trade cases. Hmm. Required airmail carriers to improve service and advocated federal loans for urban slum clearance. As early as 1925, then Secretary of Commerce Hoover had warned President Coolidge that stock market speculation was getting out of hand. Yet, in his final State of the Union address, Coolidge saw no reason for alarm. No Congress ever assembled has met with more pleasing prospect than which appeared at the present time, said Coolidge early in 1929. In the domestic field, there is tranquility and contentment and the highest record of, record of years in prosperity. This sounds like the housing bubble. <laughs> yeah. So this is some living in the White House. Here is the presidential china that they used. So then the Great Depression happened. And they've got a whole section on the Great Depression. Bank regulations. They weren't insured. There's a 1932 campaign, the bonus army, and Thank you for your he was just plagued with bad luck. Any is he really no had the best intentions. He had the best intentions, the but the dust storms and it, it was just everything. Just nothing helped. <laughs> much objective human dignity had made him a believer in self-help and public-spirited volunteer cooperation, methods he had employed with great success in his earlier worldwide relief efforts. To maintain the bedrock principle of our liberties by the full mobilization of individual and local resources and responsibility. Thank you. Lou Henry Hoover Gallery. So this part of the gallery is all the dedicated to Lou. Here are some of Lou's dresses. I would wear each and every one of those dresses, I swear to you. <laughs> I like the train on this one. The train on this one? Yeah. And that one. Oh, yeah. She's five foot seven and considered tall. So Juliet Lowe was the founder of the Girl Scouts, but she immediately recruited Lou, who uh, she served continuously as a board member uh, or officer of the Girl Scouts. She she held offices either as the Girl Scout president or vice president through wow. the twenties. Wow. And in 1929, she alone raised half a million dollars to help realize a five-year plan of organizational development. She's credited for. So she's yeah she's credited for the Girl Scout cookies. Girl Scout cookies. So when you buy Girl Scout cookies, it's because of Lou. Well, now she's to blame. Yeah, my, she's the blame for a lot of... Uh, the original dealer. The original <laughs> So there was the years of struggle and acclaim from 1933 to 64. So life after the White House was not that easy. Well, he was because blamed for quite a bit. He was blamed for a lot. Even though most of the Great Deal ideas... Or the, New Deal, New ideas, Deal ideas were actually his. for his, yeah. 
So as Lou was on the board of the Girl Scouts, he joined the board for the boy, the Boys Clubs of America. And was elected chairman. Yeah. So he was the chairman of the Boys Clubs of America. Did a lot of good for that. So these are some of the gifts that were given to him by heads of state when he was president. One of them, one of them is in Thailand right now. <laughs> it's on loan to a museum in Thailand. We should go see it. So, in his retirement years, he lived at the Waldorf, Waldorf Towers, Suite 31A. But this is what uh, this is what uh, the inside of his office looked like. This was for the last 25 years of his life. He rose each morning at seven, then planted himself at a desk in the living room depicted here, where he would work up to 10 hours a day on books, articles, government reports, and a vast correspondence with the American people. This was uh, this was an early portable teleprompter device. So they would type out his speeches and he would use this machine during uh, giving speeches. There is a piece of the actual Berlin Wall here. And you can actually encourage you to actually touch it. So I am now touching a piece of the real Berlin Wall. Yeah, something. It's amazing to say that I could do that. He was known as the Counselor to the Republic. president right there doing one of his favorite pastimes, fishing. And we are going to exit through the gift shop. <laughs> Coffee mugs, pictures, all different kind of books. That'd be a fun book. The President's Facts Book. The White House Collection. Zachary Taylor's Ulysses S. Grant. I got President's photo plates. I need a Ben Franklin pencil sharpener. What is that? It's a Ben Franklin pencil sharpener. That's awesome. He's a pretty sharp man. <laughs> Kid cooking. Iowa cooking. Like this is your shirt right here. There is the presidential library back there. And then up here on this hill, way over here, are the grave sites of the president and the first lady. Okay, and here are the grave sites of President Herbert Hoover. And First Lady Lou Henry Hoover. They were both, both born the same year, 1874. But Lou died 20 years before President Hoover. He lived 20 more years. And she was buried in California. And he died at 90 years old. And, and they... The son picked the spot. The son picked the spot and moved Lou's body from California here to lay next to her husband. And because they are Quakers, that is why you see no presidential symbols or anything like that. It's just simple 
plain graves. Well, if you can call Marvel simple plain. <laughs> but he literally has a presidential museum if you want to call that simple. What was that? He literally has a presidential museum and library on his property where his grave is. So if That's you want true. to call that simple. And yeah, true. <laughs> Like I said, from the from where the grave sits, uh, the museum is down there. The town you can actually see his house through the clearing where he was born. So, just a short walk from birthplace to gravesite. Hmm. And we are going to exit through the gift shop. <laughs> Coffee mugs, pictures, all different kind of books. That'd be a fun book, The President's Facts Book. That is an awesome shirt. That's Hoover shirt right there. Gothic. <laughs> got Rosie the Riveter shirts. Yeah. Herbert Hoover Presidential Library Museum shirts. They have presidential seal magnets with your name on it. Unfortunately, it is time to reorder mine. I do believe I am going to get the Hoover Gothic shirt. And it is $15. Good deal. Becky, would you like a Rosie the Riveter? Yeah. We can do it shirt. Yeah. All righty. $13 for Becky's shirt. So after all that presidential learning at the presidential library, we decided to take a drive there to the Coral Ridge Mall in Coral Ridge, Iowa, and go to the Mellow Mushroom uh, Pizza Place. Uh, we haven't had it in a, quite some time, so we decided to, that sounded good for lunch. <laughs> and there's none anywhere near us. Yeah, there's nothing nothing in Chicago or around Chicagoland area. I think the closest one to us is either this one or one in Indiana. Yeah, there is one in Indiana, but it's still kind of a drive. It's still a couple hours away. So uh, let's go on into the Mellow Mushroom and have some awesome pizza. So we're going to order a great white, a large great white, which is olive oil, garlic based, with sun dried, Roasted tomatoes, provolone, feta cheese, seasoned ricotta, fresh basil, mozzarella, Roma tomatoes, and onions to take home. We think I sent it. But we, just Becky and I, are going to get a holy shiitake pie. So now it's sense. So olive oil, garlic base with shiitake, button, and portobello mushrooms, caramelized onions, mozzarella, and montemore. Finished with a garlic. Is it aioli swirl? Yeah. And a spritz of black truffle oil, garnished with fresh chives and shaved parmesan. That sounds so yummy. But they got calzones and all. You can build your own pizza. Steak and cheese or cheese and chicken and cheese pizzas. That sounds really good. They got hoagies. I think I'm going to do a half of a steak and cheese hoagie to take home. Burgers. These look awesome. Yeah. All right. But check out their awesome decor here. They got Space Invaders on the wall. Over there, they got a disco cow that is being abducted and sucked into the big UFO up here. It is also a sports bar, so how about them Hawks over there? Since we are in Iowa. And this is Iowa's only 
mellow mushroom, isn't it? Welcome to Iowa's only mellow mushroom. Uh, great, yeah. great white is what she wants. What's that? Great white is what they want. That is the great, okay. So we're gonna order that one to take home. Also, if you are a beer drinker uh, at the Mellow Mushroom, they have 74 great beers on tap. And Iowa beers will be listed first. So they've got all sorts of different beers. They've even got Alaskan beer. But these are all of the Iowa beers in Alaska, California, Michigan, Missouri, Oregon, so on and so on. All right, we're gonna get a medium with each. It looks like the only Illinois beer they have is the Goose Island Ale. So, uh, Goose Island Sophie. So, which is right in our hometown of Chicago. We're gonna get them a medium great white, which is olive oil, garlic base, with sun-dried roasted tomatoes, provolone, feta, seasoned ricotta, fresh basil, mozzarella, aroma tomatoes, and onions. Okay. And then they want uh, cosmic karma, which is the mellow red sauce with feta cheese, mozzarella, spinach, sun-dried roasted tomatoes with Roma tomatoes finished with a pesto swirl. Very cool. Sounds good. I'm sure they will all, it all be eaten. It will all be eaten. Is our mushroom pizza that looks awesome <laughs> all right she was posting a picture of this on Facebook <laughs> and I said you didn't look very interesting she goes I'm praying <laughs> all right, how's everything looking? it looks, it looks awesome, awesome. all right so we're digging in mellow mushroom it's so good oh my gosh now this is a bold statement because we are from Chicago, but that is one of the best pizzas I have ever had. It really is. <laughs> wow, but we have different. Uh, it's a different kind of pizza at home. Exactly. I mean, we have the thin crust. We also have the thick crust, you know, or the deep dish. But I don't know. There's just something completely this is different. Sort of in the middle, a yeah. little bit like a, almost like a hand toss. But the the toppings and the swirl that they put on the top oh, of it really gosh. just makes it. It's it just, just unreal. It's so, nice specialty pizza. That's right. So, all right. So that was our uh, our day here at the in Iowa with the Presidential Library, Herbert Hoover, and Mellow Mushroom ending it up. And that was it for today. So, if you like what you see, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe down below, and we will see you guys next time on. Where the heck are the ovens? All right. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.